Hello, this is my school channel and my name is Abiola. For this video lesson, we'll be solving the Jam CPT past question for the subject Physics the Year 2021. Do not go anywhere, stay with us and we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school YouTube channel. Right there in this video lesson, you and I will be tackling the question 21 to 40. So join me as we begin with question 21. A lead bullet of mass 0.05 kg is fired with a velocity of 200 meters per second into a block of mass 0.95 kg. Okay, so given that the lead block can move freely, the final kinetic energy after impact is what? So when we relate with the uh, law of conservation of linear momentum, right? We should know that this kind of collision is inelastic. So under such condition, the kinetic energy, right, before the impact is greater than the kinetic energy after the impact. Like I said, the momentum is conserved. All right, so using the law, right, conservation of linear momentum, then we have M1 U1 plus M2 U2 right since it's inelastic they stick together after collision right they're going to have common velocity so that will be m1 plus m2 right into brackets their common velocity right here so we can see that the lead block right is actually at rest so whatever value it has it will be that value times zero so this is definitely gone so let me just Put that into reality so we have a lead bullet of mass 0.05 kg yeah 0.05 right times its velocity that's 200 meter per second it's times 200 right plus the lead block right that is 0.95 kg which is actually at rest so its velocity here is zero then their common velocity right so i have the first mass is 0.05 plus the other mass that is 0.95 right then their common velocity so this is definitely zero whatever you multiply by zero should give you zero so this is gone so i have 0.05 times 200 right so this means five if i want to convert to fraction one over 100 right that is five over 100 times 200 100 year one 100 year two so two times five that is ten so i have ten plus zero equals 0 0.05 plus 0 0.95 that is 1.00 so that's still one so one times v i still have v so 10 plus zero that is still 10 so my v is actually 10 so we have to find the kinetic energy remember that kinetic energy equals half mv square right half m v square so that implies half times their masses now the masses are combined together they stick together after collision right so that will be 0 0.05 plus 0 0.95 that is actually one right so their masses amounts to one over one times the v square that is 10 raised to power 2 or 10 times 10 right okay so right here i have 2 year 1, 2 year 5. So 5 times 10, I have 50. So for kinetic energy units, it's joules. So I have 50 joules. So this should be the correct answer, correct value we are searching for. So let's go back to the screen to sort this out. Very well, we have that. Okay, option A. So option A is the right option. Question 22. A ball of mass 0.1 kg is thrown vertically upwards with a speed of 10 meter per second right from the top of a tower that is 10 meters high okay so let's assume that this is a tower 10 meters high so i still throw the ball upward from this height not from the ground right so take note of that so neglecting air resistance its total energy just before hitting the ground is what okay so let's make this happen so this is what we are going to have. You can use this. V square equals to U square, right? Plus 2AS. So right now we are talking about gravity. So this will be acceleration due to gravity. That will be G. 
okay right now we can see the ball is thrown upward so it's acting against gravity so this is going to be negative right so this turns to negative i have v square equals to u square minus 2 gs we see that so at maximum height we know that this v becomes zero so i have zero square right equals the u square right we are talking with a speed thrown vertically upward with a speed of 10 meter per second so this will be 10 square right minus 2 we are giving g as 10 then times the height covered all right so i can bring this outside so i have 2 times 10 that is 20 so i have 20 hertz this is actually minus 20 hertz but if it comes here it becomes plus 20 hertz so i have 20 hertz equals on 10 raised to power 2 that is 10 times 10 and that equals 100 so dividing both sides by 20 which is the coefficient of s for the distance or the height to put so that is 5 meters all right so we can see that right now so if you look at the total height cover that is actually the first which is 5 meters then the height of the tower which is already 10 so you can see the height we are talking about now should include the height of the tower which is 10 added to the height okay that was achieved by the ball okay of mass 0.1 kg and that is actually five meters so we have 10 plus 5 that accounts for 15 meters so we can see this so at this particular height we have our potential energy right potential energy equals mass times gravity times height okay this is actually equals to work done and the work done is force times distance so force is actually you know force is actually mass times acceleration right now the acceleration is acceleration due to gravity so we have this the distance here is regarded in height so we see how the formula came to be all right so let's work with this so what is our mass the mass is actually 0 0.1 we are giving g as 10 then the height that is 15 so 0 0.1 times 10 that is 1 1 times 15 that is 15 joules okay so we see that so we have to find the total energy so just before it's in the ground we know that the pe potential energy will be converted to the kinetic energy all right so just before it's in the ground the pe becomes zero then there's a conversion right plus the ke which is 15 now so zero plus 15 that is 15 joules so the total energy just before it's in the ground we are talking about 15 joules so let's go back to the screen to secure 15 joules okay so we have that option c so option c is a valid option question 23 a car of mass 800 kg attains a speed of 25 meter per second in 20 seconds the power developed in the engine is what okay so we know power equals work done over time taking right i have my p equals w over t okay so let's recall our given data so i have my given data the speed right let me just represent that with v equals 20 right the time 20 seconds as well then the mass is 800 kg okay so i have my work done over time so i know this work done is actually force right times distance over time okay so i know distance over time is actually speed so what i should have is force times the speed isn't it so and i know that force as well is mass times acceleration recall that f right and acceleration as well is dealing with velocity over time so that is so i can see that my force is actually mv over t so if i replace f with mv over t then i should have mv over t right times the v we have that right so i should have my m my mass which is 800 times my velocity okay correction your velocity is actually 25 please it's 25 okay not 20 25 meter per second please that's a mix-up so we have 800 times 25 
right, times the next 25 as well, over the time taking, which is 20 seconds. Okay, so I have zero strike zero to year one to year 40. So 40 times 25, that's actually 1,000. 1,000 times 25, that is actually 25,000. So I have 25,000 or 2.5 times 10 raised to power 4 watts. Units for power. How do I get 10 raised to power 4? You count 1, 2, look at this, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's go back to the screen to secure 25,000 watts or 2.5 times 10 raised to power 4. Right here we have that option B. So option B is the valid option. 24. When the brakes in a car are applied, the frictional force on the tires is what? Okay, it's an advantage because it is acting in the opposite direction of the motion of the car because we know that friction is a force of opposition right what friction does it's opposite motion okay or any force that tends to produce motion so definitely the frictional force on the tire is an advantage because it is in the opposite direction it opposes motion of the car so option d is the right option 25 if the stress on the wire is 10 raised to the power 7 Newton per meter square and the wire is stretched from its original length of 10.00 cm to 10.05 cm, the young modulus of the wire is what? Okay, so this is super easy to solve. Okay, so young modulus, I can use letter E to represent it, is actually tensile stress over strain right so i know that strain is actually extension over the original length and stress and stress is force over area but i don't need to do that so the extension produced now we have to get that that's 10.05 minus 10.00 right over the original length which is actually 10.00 it was stretched right so that should be I can just make this 10, okay? So 10.05 minus 10.00, that should be 0 0.05, right, over 10, okay? So we can see this. This is what we have here. All right, so I know that my young modulus is actually stress, isn't it, divided by strain, just like a variation of what I have here, okay? So that should be the stress is given as 10 raised to the power 7, divided by the strain, which is extension over length, that is 0 0.05, okay, over 10, isn't it? If I want to make this into times, I'll just have to switch their position. So that will be times 10, okay, over 0 0.05. Okay, let me proceed with this. So I have 10 raised to the power 7 times 10, right? over i know that 0 0.05 is actually 5 times 10 raised to the power minus 2 because if you look at this we have 1 0 0 or you can count 1 2 you can see that we have two numbers after the decimal point so this is what i have right here so i have 5 year 1 isn't it 5 year 2 okay so i have my 2 times 10 raised to the power 7 isn't it then i have minus this is 10 raised to the power 2. I know this divided by means minus, right? Then I have the minus 2 from here. So that will be 2 times 10 raised to the power minus times minus, that is plus. So 7 plus 2, that is 9. So this is what I have. 2 times 10 raised to the power 9. So let's go back to the screen. 2 so fish out. 2 times 10 raised to the power 9. Fish out. Okay. All right, so we have that in option D. So option D is the right option. 26. A solid weighs 10.00 Newton in here, 6 Newton when forcefully immersed in water. Okay, and 7.0 Newton when fully immersed in a liquid X. So calculate the relative density of the liquid X. Okay, so this is what we are going to have. We know that relative density, okay, for this liquid we are talking about will be the loss of weight, right, of the solid in that liquid 
over the loss of weight of the solid in water. So what is actually the weight of the solid in air? That is 10 minus, when it was immersed in the liquid, we have 7 over, okay, the weight in air minus the weight in water, which is actually 6 Newton when forcefully immersed in water. Okay, so I have 10 minus 7, that is 3 over 10 minus 6, that is 4. So I have 3 over 4 or 0 0.75, depending on the value supplied. Okay, so let's go back to the screen to be sure of what we've done. So we have our options, right, in fractions. So option C is the correct option. 27. When the temperature of a liquid increases, its surface tension, what? Okay, so at first, what is surface tension? Surface tension, talking about that tension of force, okay, acting parallel to the surface of a liquid or along the surface of the liquid. And such the liquid behave like a stretched elastic skin. Okay, so let's look at some factors that can decrease surface tension. Okay, so such factors, okay, they include you are adding detergent or soap. Okay, to put probably you had alcohol you had camphor or you are eating the liquid or you increase temperature so i've mentioned some so right now when the temperature of a liquid increases what happens okay the surface tension decreases okay that is where you will find out that when you actually wash your clothes or you do laundry with soap right hot soapy um, water or hot soapy setup okay you realize that it is faster it is easier that way compared to when the water is cold and it is soapless okay so when you increase the temperature of a liquid what you are doing is you are decreasing the surface tension so the correct option is option a you can increase your confidence by using any of the my school tools all you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below this is going to get you to the my school website right there you get to download the my school mobile app or you can try out the my school software for your laptops and computers so join me as I solve question 28. A gas at a volume of V, V0 or V0, okay, in a container at pressure P0 is compressed to one-fifth of its volume. Okay, so what would be its pressure if the magnitude of its original temperature T is constant? So if you recall Boyce's law, you know that this is definitely a concept built around Boyce's law. Okay, in Boyce's law, we know pressure is inversely proportional to volume. Okay, provided that temperature remains constant. So that is what we have there. Okay, so that means if there's uh, an inverse relationship between pressure and volume, that means that as pressure goes up, volume comes down. Okay, so vice versa as well. So you can see from the question, we are told that it, uh, at P naught, right, is compressed to one fifth of its volume. So we see right there that the pressure goes down, okay, by being divided by five. That means the pressure now should go up by being multiplied by what's five well let's do that mathematically okay so this is what i mean so recall that we have p1 v1 equals to p2 v2 so we know p1 is represented by p naught right v1 is represented by v naught okay and we have our p2 which is what we are looking for isn't it then we are told that our v2 is one fifth of v1 Okay, so that is one fifth, one over five of V one. Okay, so that is simply P not V not equals P two, isn't it? One fifth. That is V not times one. Okay, that is actually V not. So I have V not over five. So do we see that? So we cross multiply. So I have five P not V not equals P two V. Not. So remember, we are looking for P2. So we divide both sides by V0 or V0, okay, or V1. Okay, so we see that. So we are left with P0. So that means the second pressure is actually five times the original or initial pressure. So this is the correct um, value that we are looking for. So let's go back to the screen to see if we have five P0. Okay, so we have that. Yes, option D. So option D is the correct option. Do not forget to motivate us by hitting the like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get alerts immediately we upload the next video. 
A piece of substance of specific its capacity 450 joules per kilogram per Kelvin falls through a vertical distance of 20 meters from rest. Okay, from rest. So calculate the rise in temperature of the substance on hitting the ground when all its energies are converted into it. So we are looking at relationship between it, right? Its energy and potential energy. Remember, it's falling from rest. So you see that concept. So remember that our heat energy, we have MC delta theta, right, equals potential energy, MGH, mass times gravity times height. Okay, so I have mass M. Okay, so we see that mass cancels mass. So I'm left with the specific its capacity of that particular substance. Okay, so I know that ion has this particular value, but let's forget about that. So let's just impute the value 450, right? We are asked to find the change in temperature. So let me just make this theta instead of changing theta, right? Okay, equals the gravity okay we know that is 10 times the height that we have the height is actually 200 so 200 or 20 okay i have 20 rather so what can i do right here i can divide both sides by 450. okay so i have my change in temperature i can put this back okay so that uh, we reduce the amount of deviation from the concept presented so I have 0 cancel 0 so I have 20 over 45 so 5 goes here I have 4 5 goes here I have 9 so I should have 4 over 9 right or 0 0.4444444 so either we are working with fraction or decimal so let's go back to the screen to see if we have any of these presentations so we are working with the celsius scale right celsius for the temperature change so we have four over nine where do we find that okay carefully we can see that with option b so option b is the correct option a liquid boils when it's saturated vapor pressure is equal to the external pressure okay so before i start or before i continue with the statement provided. Let's look at the question. Okay, that's our focal point. So, which of the above combinations are peculiarities of the boiling point of a liquid? So, what the question is saying is, okay, which of these combos, right, uh, the properties or are correct, okay, are correct about boiling point. So, let's look at statement A. Okay, so a liquid boils when it's SVP saturated vapor pressure equal to the external pressure. This is very accurate. You know, boiling occurs when SVP equals to ATP atmospheric pressure. Okay, so this is correct. Statement one is good to go. Look at statement two. Dissolved substance in pure water leads to an increase in the boiling point. This is also correct because we know presence of impurities raises the boiling point or increases the boiling point so this is good to go as well so i have statement one and two let's consider three and four so when the external pressure is increased the boiling point increases this is correct as well okay you see this concept whereby um it's peculiar to people that actually climb high mountains you know the pressure there their altitude is very low so it's advisable that they go with pressure cooker okay so that they can actually improvise an increase in pressure so that the boiling point of whatever thing they are cooking can come up so when the external pressure is increased this actually affects the boiling points you can see the concept so let's see statement iv okay, statement four dissolved substance in pure water decreases the boiling point this is incorrect so uh, if we want to put together combos that are accurate so we are going to look at statement one statement two statement three so which of these options right actually has this right combo and that is option a so option a is good to go the temperature gradient across copper rod of thickness 0.02 meters maintained at two temperature junctions of 20 degrees celsius and 80 degrees celsius respectively is what okay so when we are looking at the temperature gradient we are talking about temperature at the hot end minus the temperature at the cold end so temperature difference basically now is what we are looking at so that is um we have at the hot end that is 80 degrees right minus 20 degrees over the distance right so we are talking about thickness here you can refer to it as increasing 
the height or whatever. So we are just giving the distance right here or the thickness as 0 0.02. So 80 minus 60, that 80 minus 20 rather, that is 60 divided by 0 0.02. So I know this to be, you can actually point your calculator to get your answer, but I know this to be 60 over 1, right, times, okay, let me start with divided by, divided by, this is, you can see, 2 over 100. Okay, so this is 60 over 1 times 100 over 2. So 2 year 1, 2 year 30. 30 times 100, that is actually 3,000. So I know that the units of temperature gradients can be taken as Kelvin per meter, isn't it? So it's not kilometer, it's Kelvin per meter. Or I can write it this way. 3, this is 1, 2, 3, 3.0, right, times 10 raised to power 3, okay, Kelvin per meter. So, 3.0 times 10 raised to power 3, or 3,000. So, let's go back to the screen to see if we have the value we just provided. Okay, we have that with option B, so option B is the correct option. Calculate the mass of ice that would melt when 2 kg of copper is quickly transferred from boiling water to a block of ice without its loss. Okay, so specific its capacity of copper is 400. I just skipped the unit. Okay, latent heat of fusion of ice is 3.3 times 10 raised to power 5. So let's work with this value. So remember that uh, when you talk about the quantity of heat evolved, that is mc delta theta, right? Okay, this is for the copper. Then when you come to the heat transferred or the heat gained by the ice, remember this. The mass of the ice, right, times latent heat of fusion. Okay, so the mass of the copper is actually 2. Okay, specific um, heat capacity of copper is 400. The temperature we are talking about, boiling water, that is 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, which is equals to the mass of the height, which is unknown, right? Times the latent heat of fusion, okay, of the height, which is 3.3 .3 times 10 raised to the power 5. So I'll just divide both sides by this. Okay, 3.3 .3 times 10 raised to the power 5. Okay, so what do we do so we have 2 times 400 so i have 800 right so i have 800 times 100 over i can actually um, make this easy i can turn this to um, 33 right okay so if i turn this to 33 right so that will be times 10 raised to power 4 isn't it okay so numbers to numbers so this will be 800 is actually 8 times 10 raised to the power 2 right 100 as well is 10 raised to the power 2 okay over 33 right this is divide means minus isn't it divided by 10 raised to the power 4 okay we have that so we have 8 over 33 right times 10 raised to the power 2 plus 2 times sin is to plus then we have the value which is minus 4 so i have 8 over 3 3 right times 10 raised to power 2 plus 2 that is 4 4 minus 4 that is 0 so 10 raised to power 0 that is still 1 so my answer should be 8 over 3 3 okay so we can convert this to a fraction so let's go back to the screen to sort out 8 over 3 3 of course, our unit in kg. So where do we have that? We have that in option A. So option A is the valid option. The equation of a wave traveling along the positive x direction is given by y, which is your vertical displacement equals 0 0.25 times 10 raised to the power of this. Okay. So determine the angular velocity of the wave motion. Okay. So for a progressive wave, we can actually use this equation. This is the standard that we should have. This is the vertical displacement, please. So that is actually A, right? So we have A sine, okay? Your angular velocity times T minus your face angle. All right, so let's make this comparison. So we can see that if we ask to seek out the amplitude, you are going to use this. 
as your value for amplitude, right? So you look at this, we have WT, we have 500 C. So the W you are seeing here is not, is not actually W, it's angular velocity. So you can see that your angular velocity, okay, we have 500 C, isn't it? So T strikes out T. So the angular velocity here is actually 500 or if you want to bring it to standard form, that is 5.0 times 10 raised to power 2 was the unit for angular velocity. That is radian per seconds. Okay, so this is what we have. So either we have 500 or 5.0 times 10 raised to power 2. So let's go back to the screen to see if we have that provision. So we have 5.00, okay, times 10 raised to power 2 radian per second. So option C is good to go. If a sound wave goes from a cold air region to a hot air region, its wavelength will increase. So when you look at factors affecting the speed of sound, okay, you talk about density, you talk about the elasticity of the medium, you also talk about temperature and probably wind, okay, direction of wind as well is influential. So if a sound wave goes from cold air region to hot air region, so we know that cold air is denser compared to hot air. So the speed of the sound wave okay will be faster in hot air compared to cold air so we can see that there's an increase in speed right so since we have an increase in speed definitely the wavelength should increase as well so if a sound wave goes from a cold air region to a hot air region all right its wavelength will increase so option a is a valid option the lowest notes emitted by a stretched ring has a frequency of 40 hertz. Okay, so how many overtones are there between 40 hertz and 180 hertz? How many overtones? Okay, so let's do this. So we have fundamental frequency. All the first harmonics, okay, fundamental frequency is actually giving us 40 hertz, right? So we have to find out how many overtones, right? Okay, between. 40 hertz, right, and okay, 180 hertz, just to be sure. 180 hertz, okay, all right, okay, small letter Z. Okay, so let's work with this. So, this is our first harmonics or the f fundamental frequency. So, the first overtone or the second harmonics, right? So, the first overtone, overtone is actually two times the fundamental uh, frequency that's two times 40 that is 80 okay so the second overtone or the third harmonics is actually three times 40 that is 120 all right so the next overtone that we are going to have which is the third overtone or the fourth harmonics is actually four right times 40 that's actually 160 Okay, the next overtone, which is the fourth overtone, right, or the fifth harmonics, that is actually 5 times 40, that is actually 200. So, we have to sort out how many overtones, okay, can we find between 40 and 180. So, between 40 and 180, I have 1, I have 2, I have 3, okay, so I have 3 overtones that can be fixed between 40 hertz and 180 hertz. So we can see that the next one we have there is bigger than 180. So that's why we just have to make do with this three. So we have three overtones. So let's go back to the screen to pick three overtones. So we have that with option B. So option B is the valid option. A man stands four meters in front of a plane mirror. If the mirror is moved one meters towards the man, so moving the mirrors one in the mirror one, one meter towards the man means it has been reduced by one meter. So four meter minus three meter that is three meter uh, minus one meter that is three meter. So now the man is standing three meters from the mirror. Okay, from this implication, so the distance between him and his new image is what? So we know that the object distance in front of the mirror is equal to the image distance behind the mirror. So object distance is actually three meters right image distance is actually three meters as well so we can see that so if this is the mirror okay let's let me take this as the mirror so we are now told the distance between him right and his image between him and his image this is him the man then his image 
So we have from year to year is three meters, from year to year is three meters. So the distance between him and his image will be actually three meters, right, plus three meters. And that is actually six meters. So the correct option should be found with six meters. Let's go back to the screen to see if we have six meters. Very well, we can confirm that. So option C is the appropriate option. Kindly remember that you can ask those questions right now. All you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the My School website, okay? On that spot, you can ask your questions and our solution providers are going to interact with you until you get the necessary solution. The inside portion of part of a holometer sphere of diameter 20 centimeter is polished. The portion will therefore form a what? So take note of this. Okay, so for concave mirror, the inside, right, is the reflection part. The outside is the silver coated side. All right, so, and the polished surface is a good reflector. So this tells you that the polished surface is actually the inside portion. And concave mirror has its inside portion as its reflective part. Okay, do we see that now? So definitely we are talking about a concave mirror right here so we are giving the diameter as 20 centimeter so we are we are now asked a question okay the portion will therefore form a what so that portion we are looking at is definitely a concave mirror or a concave lens to put okay so since we have that concept already look at this remember that radius equals diameter over 2 right so we are giving diameter as 20 over 2 so we have this so the radius here is actually 10. Radius is 10. Remember, F, the focal, that is R over 2. That is 10 divided by 2. That is 2 year 1, 2 year 5. So we are talking about 5 for a concave mirror. Let's go back to the screen to set to the score. So we are talking about this uh, inside portion will surely give us a concave mirror of focal length five centimeters so option a is the best option perhaps you have explanations contributions or reviews you like to make please we are so interested all you just need to do is to use the comment section below please indicate the question number and the contribution or reviews you like to share the velocities of light in air and glass are 3.0 times 10 to the power 8 and 2.0 times 10 to the power 8 respectively. Okay, so if the angle of refraction is 30 degrees, the sign of the angle of incidence is what? Okay, so refractive incidence, I can bring two formulas together and I can say that um, the sign of the angle of incidence over the sign of the angle of refraction, which is 30 degrees, equals the speed of light in air or vacuum, which is giving us uh, 3.0 point, yeah, 3 times 10 to the power 8, okay, over the speed of light in the other medium, okay, which is glass right now. And that is 2.0 times 10 raised to power 8 as well, please. So, if I cross multiply, I have this. Okay, equals 3 point this 10 raised to the power 8, right? Times, I know sine 30 degrees is actually 0 0.5. Okay. Okay, then that's what I have here. Then over 2.0 times 10 raised to the power 8. Okay, so this implies that 3.0 times 0 0.5 3 times 0 0.5, that is 3 times half, that is 1.5. So I have 1.5 over 2, right, times 10 raised to the power 8 minus 8. Divided by means minus. So this 8 here is what we have here. 10, 10 is common, so I just picked 1. So I have 1.5 divided by 2, that is 0 0.75, right, times 10 raised to the power 8 minus 8, that is 0, that is 0 0.75, or 3 over 4. So this is sine of the angle of incidence is actually 0 0.75 or 3 over 4. So this is what we are asked to look for. We are not asked to convert it to degrees. Yeah, so we can leave it this way. So 0 0.75 or 3 over 4. So let's go back to the screen to secure that. Very well. We have option D. So option D is the accurate option.
An astronomical telescope is said to be in normal adjustment when the what? When the final image is at infinity. Why? Okay, because at, as at this point, under the concept of normal adjustment or normal arrangement, okay, what you are looking at is the principal focus of the eyepiece, right, corresponds to that of the objective. All right, so you see me, I just mentioned eyepiece and objective. Okay, when you talk about astronomical telescope, you know, you're using it to view distance objects, okay, like your stars and other planetary bodies. All right, so um, this kind of telescope, it has two converging lenses. Okay, we have the ob objective lens and the eyepiece, okay, or the eyepiece lens. Okay, so under normal adjustment or arrangements, the principal focus of the two, okay, they actually correspond. That is where we now have the final image is at infinity. So option D is the right option. Question 40. A two Henry inductor, right, has negligible resistance and is connected to a 50 over pi as AC supply. Okay, so the reactance of the inductor is what? So we are looking for inductive reactance. Okay, and the formula is actually okay, 2 pi FL. All right, that is 2 times pi, right? Times the frequency is given as 50 over pi. Then the inductor, we are talking about 2 Henry. All right, so pi cancels pi. So I have 2 times 50, that is 100 times 2. That is actually 200 ohms. All right, so let's see if we have 200 ohms. That should be there. All right. Oh, very well. Option A. So option A is the valid option. Right there, we've come to the end of this video lesson, but there are definitely interesting content to come. All you just need to do is to always hit that like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and do not forget bell notifications so you can get informed immediately we upload the next video content.